So I present first the motivation behind this work. Suppose you have a binary classification task consisting in labeling images as there is a person or there is not a person. For this task, we have some labeled images uh, extracted from a particular corpus, for example, a corpus uh, of the web. Usually, in supervised classification, we are able to learn a low error classifier on uh, images extracted from the same corpus. In other words, the test distribution and the training distribution are the same. However, in domain adaptation, these uh, two distributions are different. For example, if the test images are extracted from videos, then the quality of the classifier of the model is no more guaranteed. So first, I will present the theory of domain adaptation. Then I will present the theory of learning with good similarity functions and uh, its associated uh, explicit projection space. Then I will present our contribution consisting in modifying the projection space for domain adaptation. After, I will present some experimental results. And before I conclude, I will uh, present an extension of this work with some theoretical aspects for how method. So first, what is uh, domain adaptation? Like in supervised classification, we have an input space and a label set. Here, we consider only binary problem. One key difference in domain adaptation is that we have two different distributions. The first one is the source domain and can be seen as the training distribution. The second one is the target domain and can be seen as the test distribution. We also can define the, er the error of uh, an hypothesis on the two domains. We can define the source domain error and the target domain error as the expectation of uh, the hypothesis to commit an error on the considered domain. And in fact, in domain adaptation, we want to infer a model with a low target domain error. We consider the case where we are only labeled for the source domain. For the target domain, we have no information about the label. And the main issue, the main issue is then if we learn, if uh, the classifier is learned on the source domain, how does it perform on the target domain? To answer to this question, we have the following intuition here. Here we have uh, our two domains, the source one in red, in red and the target one in blue, with the labels to see the intuition. On the first figure, if we learn a low error classifier on the red data, we clearly see that it commits a lot of error on the blue data. And the second figure where we can uh, remark that the two domains are very close, then learning a low error classifier on the red data is equivalent to obtain a low error classifier on the blue data. With this intuition, Ben David and Associates have proven the following theorem. Here we have a bound over the error that we want to minimize, a bound over the target domain error. This bound is constituted by the sum of three terms. The first one is the classical error in supervised classification. In fact, it's the error on the source domain. The second term is the distance between the two domains, but without the label. It's uh, the distance between the two marginal distribution of the two domains. And intuitively, this distance can be seen as follow. Again, our two domains, the source one in red, the target one in blue, without the label here. And the low distance is equivalent to be not able to separate the two domains, the two distributions. The last term is the error of what is called the joint optimal classifier. In fact, it's the best error that we can expect to obtain on, this, on the two uh, domains at the same time. And this value can be seen as a measure of adaptation ability in the current space. So for doing uh, domain adaptation, we suppose that this value, uh, that this value uh, is low. So finally, for domain adaptation, we want to minimize this bound for building a new projection space where the two domains tend to be closed. And we propose to use classifier based on good similarity function that I present now. Here we are in the theory proposed by Balkan. 
where a similarity function is any pairwise function that compares two instances and returns a value between minus one and one. And we say that a, fun a similarity function is good for a binary classification problem if it verifies these uh, two points. Intuitively, we have a set of reasonable points denoted by her. Uh, these points are kind of uh, support points and um, we want that for a lot of examples, there are on average more similar to reasonable points to the same class than the reasonable points to the opposite class. Given the set of reasonable points, we can define an explicit projection space where an instance is represented by its vector uh, of similarities to each reasonable points. And it's in this space that we can learn um, a, linear, uh, a linear classifier with good generalization guarantees. The last important thing is that uh, this notion of good similarity function generalizes the notion of kernel in the sense that uh, um, a kernel is a good similarity function, but a good similarity function may be not symmetric and not positive semi-definite. And in fact, it's this property that we want to use to modify the explicit projection space for domain adaptation. So our first uh, contribution consisting in modifying this space a priori. I recall first that for domain adaptation task, we want to be performing on the target domain. So we propose to insert some kind of target information in the similarity function. For this, we uh, normalize the similarity scores to, uh, according to uh, the, the source sample and the target sample in order to have a zero mean and a unit variance for each reasonable point. And we will see in experimental results that this kind of normalization can improve uh, performances for um, the, the hardest uh, task, hardest domain adaptation task. Our second contribution consists in uh, regularizing uh, the construction of the projection space during the learning process. Here we start from the, the domain adaptation bound proposed by Ben David. We want to minimize this bound. And for minimizing the first term of the bound, for minimizing the, the source domain error, we simply use the linear problem proposed by Balkan for learning with a good similarity function. Here we can remark that we don't know uh, a priori the set of relevant uh, reasonable points, so we take a set uh, of enough, enough uh, potential reasonable points and Solving this problem is equivalent to learn the classifier and to select the relevant reasonable point by associating to uh, them a non-null weight alpha j. The second term of the bound is the distance between the marginal distribution of the two domains. I recall that uh, a low distance is equivalent to be not able to separate the two domains, the two distribution. So we take a set, uh, a set of pairs which associate to a, a source point, a target point, and we want to build a new projection space, phi nu, where two points of a, of a pair tend to be not separable. In other words, we want that the divergence between the return value by the hypothesis tend to be low. And in fact, this uh, divergence can be bound by this term, and this term can be seen as a distance in a new projection space. And this projection space is defined by the row weighting of the similarity function by the learned weight alpha g. And we can do this because of the non-PSD and non-symmetric uh, non requirement for good uh, similarity function. And finally, we take this red term has a new regularization term to add in the problem proposed by Balkan for the similarity function. And we obtain uh, this global optimization problem. On the first line, we can recognize the problem proposed by Balkan for learning with a good similarity function. And on the second line, we can recognize our regularization term for each uh, pairs of uh, our pair set. 
Then the last question uh, and is uh, how can we validate the hyperparameters, the raw weighting, and the selection of uh, the pearls? Here we have no information about uh, the, the label on the target domain, so we cannot uh, do a cross validation process. So we propose to use a kind of reverse validation defined by a reverse classifier HR. And this process is the following. Here again are two domains, the source one in red with labels, the target one in blue without label. We learn our classifier with the, our regularization term. Then we only focus on the target sample. We label this sample with our classifier. We obtain a pseudo labeled target sample. And with this pseudo labeled target sample, we learn the reverse classifier here without domain adaptation. And we can evaluate this classifier, this reverse classifier, on the source domain with the idea that if two domains are related, then the reverse classifier performs well on the source domain. So now I will present some experimental results. Here we consider two different similarity functions. The first one is the classical Gaussian kernel. The second one is its normalization. We want to compare the performances of uh, the two uh, similarity function with and without the regularization term. In other words, with and without domain adaptation. We consider two different problems. The first one is a toy problem called intertwining mounds where one mound corresponds to one class. And we consider one source domain and eight different target domain according to eight, rotation, eight different rotation angles. Our second problem is a real image annotation task. Here we take as the source domain some images extracted from a particular corpus called Pascal Vogue 2007. And we consider as target domain some images extracted from videos. And these videos are come from the corpus named Tregbid 2007. Here we can observe the first result for the toy problem. We can see the correct uh, classification percentage according to the target domain rotation angle. The first thing is that the regularization term in red and in green improves the results. The second thing is that the normalized similarity function in red improves performances for the hardest task. I want to say uh, why. So to try to, uh, to answer to this question, we propose to uh, estimate the goodness of the similarity function on the target domain. So here we start from the definition on Balkan, and I recall that we want um, one that uh, for uh, a lot of examples, they are on average more similar to points of the same class than, than the point of the opposite class. So we propose to evaluate the goodness of a similarity function as the proportion epsilon of example that not verified this property according to a margin gamma. And uh, a similarity function is better if this proportion is lower. And here we can observe uh, in red the normalized similarity function and in blue the Gaussian kernel. For the freeze task, we clearly see that the two, uh, the two similarity functions are very similar. And for the five others task, the red similarity, the normalized one, is better. So it confirms the previous results. Here it's the results for the real image annotation task. Here again, the first thing is that the regularization term improved the results. And here, in fact, we have a difficult domain adaptation task, so uh, the normalized similarity function is preferred. Now it's the end of the contribution of the published paper, and I now say some words about uh, some theoretical uh, aspect for our method, for the method with the regularization term. We can, the first result is an analysis of the sparsity of the inferred model. We can prove this lemma. Here we have, in fact, a bound for the optimal solution of our problem. And we can say the following thing. Uh, 
that is the sparsity of the models depends on the hyperparameters and on the value BR and this value is in fact uh, related, related to the difference between coordinates in the projection space and in fact if the two domains are far then this value tends to be high and it can imply an increase of the sparsity. Uh, in some experiments uh, we have uh, we have seen that uh, the gain ratio is between, uh, for the size for the model, is between 2 and 10. The second result is about uh, generalization abilities for our method. We have, in fact, investigated the notion of algorithmic robustness proposed by uh, Xu and Malar at Col 2010, where the idea is, it's, uh, is uh, if a testing sample is similar to a training sample, then the testing error is close to the training error. However, this, uh, this notion is still a conjecture for domain adaptation. Despite, despite this drawback, we can prove that her method is robust on the source domain. And with the help of the bond proposed by Ben David for domain adaptation, we can derive uh, directly this uh, bond uh, over the target uh, Error. So, to conclude, we can say that uh, good similarity function help us to, uh, to build a relevant projection space for domain adaptation. And we have proposed two ways to, to modify this space. Um, the first one is the, an a priori normalization of a similarity function according to the target domain. And as FutureWorks, we, we aim uh, to find a better way to design a similarity function for domain adaptation. Our second method is based on the addition of a new regularization term for moving closer to two domains during the learning process. And I just want to add that we have extended this work to an iterative approach, and this approach can improve the performances and uh, can uh, lighten the search of different parameters. So, thank you. Thank you. The fact here is that we don't have the same geometrical interpretation than classical experiment theory because we don't have similar positive functions. So, we cannot exactly say that we are close to the decision boundary. But one thing is that we the selection of the, what we call the reasonable points are some uh, representative points of some arrows of decision in the space. And in the meditation, we think that uh, we may select some points that are between the source domain and the target domain. You know, the target domain. So they are, again, it's try to give an intuition can, between the two domains to give to help to define a new this is not a reason that it has to go to the, to the target domain. But, I mean, the other fact is that when we have some uh, domains that are far, what we want to do is to find the new in space. And if we mean that we want in general to find sub, I mean, sub space where the two domains are similar, which implies to reduce a bit um, the position space I mean, in the dimension. And trying to focus on a new subspace and a small space where we can think. So it is the idea to find these particular points where we, where we project the similarities we are able to, to get closer to the target domain. So I mean I don't think it's exactly to be close or not close to the separation uh, uh, hypothesis, but I want to find opportunities in space where the source and target and then you try to learn the best hypothesis in this space. So we try to define the new projection space in this case. And the projection space is the projection to the similarity scores to some present points, which may be not, are not the same and only with the same. Okay, thank you. Um, in practical applications, uh, task learning is very useful or might be very, very useful, but it's difficult to, to understand uh, how to make the assumptions of the specific uh, task learning technique like yours in, in practical problems. So, stressing, I would like to have some comments on, on which uh, assumptions uh, do, you, do, you, do you assume in, in your method and uh, um, 
Because the problem is not just expressing the assumption in some mathematical way, but being able to express these in practical problems where maybe the language or the domain language is different and uh, they're not straightforward to be bad. So, uh, if you want to say something more about this problem. It clearly depends on the, the problem and the concern. Uh, I, I'm okay, and um, we we try to propose a general method, but uh, the, the, I think the main important thing is the, the this notion of uh, per set, and uh, with uh, this uh, the, this per set, if we know this this set a priori, it's it's seems to be easy to, uh, to, do, uh, to make domain adaptation because we, we know which point we want to, uh, to move closer. And we, if we don't know this, uh, this set, we have to choose uh, this set between uh, all of the points and it's clearly uh, intractable. That's why we, uh, we have proposed uh, an iterative approach that tends to uh, autocorrect uh, its uh, selection, but it's very uh, hard to, uh, to control the, this, uh, this problem. So, uh, the main, I think the main important uh, hypothesis is that uh, the last term of the bond proposed by Ben David, the hero of the joint optimal uh, classifier, is, uh, has to be uh, low for, uh, for doing uh, domain adaptation because if, uh, it can be impossible to do, uh, for, to do uh, domain adaptation for some problem, I think. I think you have to... Stop meeting the discussion and continue with the second speaker. Let's give a hand to 